live today from our top secret bunker studio here at uh, Area 52. Right next to Area 51, deep in the heart of the Nevada desert, this is Pastor Mike. It is good to be with you today. I hope that you are feeling as well today as I am feeling, and I'm feeling pretty good today. Just a little bit of back pain today, no big deal, nothing to worry about. And uh, I don't have any headaches, don't have any arm aches, don't have anything like that. And so things are well with me. I um, appreciate all the prayers that everybody has sent to our family in... Um, in mind of our newest grandbaby, uh, Adeline Renee. And um, she, uh, Lindsay, is up there now. I haven't heard any word today on her condition. They had to bump the oxygen up a little bit last night. and uh, But otherwise, the doctor says that she is doing very, very well, and we praise the Lord for that. We're still waiting to hear exactly when they're going to be doing surgery on her. And in case you don't know what all is going on, um, Adeline Renee was born with diaphragmatic, a diaphragmatic hernia. And it's what you think it is. It's a herniation in the diaphragm, and a lot of her, her liver and everything like that is up here, and they have to get that back down where it belongs. And uh, But she is a pretty little girl. And we thank God for her. We pray for her every day. And um, we are still, you know, it's just one of those things right now. It's up in the air. And we don't want it to be up in the air. We want it to be down on the ground or in the Lord's hands or w whatever. That's where we want it. And um, and so anyway, I appreciate everybody's prayers. And I usually let Lindsay know and the family know that everybody's praying for them. And so it is mucho Appreciado. Uh, I pulled up Drudge Report and I pulled up World Net Daily a while ago. I got a couple things I want to deal with. I got a I got an interesting list here uh, in my hand of uh, and I just uh, I think somebody sent this to me in an email or it was on Drudge Report earlier. A um, a an article released by U.S. Senator Tom Coburn of uh, he's a Republican from Oklahoma where the wind comes sweeping down the plain, where the waving wheat can sure smell sweet, and the wind comes right behind the rain. Um, I lived in Oklahoma for about three years, and I never had a problem with being in Oklahoma. Um, it was a nice, beautiful area, and uh, enjoyed it. Some good people out there. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, from U.S. Senator Tom Colburn of, um, of Oklahoma. And he released a new oversight report called Wastebook 2011 that highlights over $6.5 billion in examples of some of the most egregious, that's an interesting word, egregious, some of the most egregious ways your taxpayer dollars are wasted. This report details 100 of the countless unnecessary, duplicative, and low-priority projects spread throughout the federal government. Uh, there is a quotation here from Dr. Coburn. Video games, robot dragons, Christmas trees, and magic museums. This is not a Christmas wish list. These are just some of the ways the federal government spent your tax dollars. Over the past 12 months, politicians argued, debated, and lamented on how to rein in the federal government's out-of-control spending. All the while, Washington was on a shopping binge. Spending money we do not have on things we do not absolutely need. You know, I'm going to stop right there. And I was uh, curious as to kind of some things going on news last night. And I uh, switched over to Fox News late last night and caught, uh, what's his name? Bill O'Reilly. And he had Juan Williams on there. And Juan Williams is a liberal. And uh, Juan Williams is going off about this, this budget deal that's going on in Washington, D.C. right now. And um, I can't quote him exactly, so I'm going to characterize him and or stereotype what he said. Uh, and I say stereotype because he is a liberal, and liberals all talk the same, and they act like that a, a debt is like, you, when you say the word national debt, they just kind of go, they don't understand the language of a national debt. They, they, to, I don't know, I don't. I don't know where they come from in thinking that a debt of what's going to be, and O'Reilly pointed out in the, in the broadcast last night, that um, the national debt could be in the next few years 20 
trillion dollars. We don't have that kind of cash. We don't have that kind of money to pay it back. We have a, I mean, we have a strong background, but we don't. Have to. Juan Williams just kind of, it just kind of went over his head. That um, you know, anything in this bill, that uh, or any of these politicians that come out and say, you know, look, there, there's just stuff going on in this country. It's irresponsible. We got to, we got to do it. And they start talking about the national debt, and Williams just goes. Debt, you know, they don't even know what that is. I, I don't know if they just don't consider the fact that we as a country, and, I, and I'll say this, it's not just the politicians. It's not just the politicians. When you start looking under your neighbor's Christmas tree, which you got to be careful, you could get arrested for that. When you start looking under your neighbor's Christmas tree or yours, you have to ask yourself the question, I wonder how much of this stuff under this tree was bought on debt, was not paid for up front. How much of this was put on a credit card, and um, they hope maybe to be able to pay it off. And some people, some people, when they have a credit card, the thought never occurs to them that they would have to pay that back. It just it doesn't dawn on them. So it's not just the politicians who don't have a concept in their brain of what the national debt is all about. It's a large portion of Americans who think that to gain merchandise like the Obama Chia, okay? And don't worry, I did not pay for this. Somebody bought me that as a gift. They bought it for me as a humorous gift. But for some people, to the, the, the gain of merchandise and the gain of things um, is everything, and they'll do whatever they can to get it. They'll do it, they'll, and they'll do whatever they can to make sure that their children have at least as much or more than the children next door so that when they go to school, January 2nd or 3rd, or when they go back to school after the Christmas holiday, that their kids can show everybody that their parents are better than everybody else. Okay, I remember the day in going back to school after the Christmas holiday, going back to school, and every kid is bringing something they got from Christmas. And I'm looking at that stuff, and I'm going, oh, man, that's cool. I wish I had that. Oh, wow, that's, hmm, you know. And I always felt bad. And I guess some of these parents are compensating or whatever. Well, I don't want my child to feel bad. Oh, I want, I, and, and I love this one. I love this one. Well, I just want my child to have a better life than what I had. Unless you grew up amongst 14 children and was picking cotton at the age of five, practically everybody in America for the last 40 years has had a better lifestyle than that. Okay, and I've heard that before. I, I uh, we used to have a Christian school here, and I had a had a class of youngsters, and um, I remember um, I remember one of the young men said that he was gonna. He